On this episode of Design to the Nines, I'm gonna show you my top 10 farmhouse DIYs that will absolutely blow your mind. So let's get started. Did you notice my new pretty apron? I've been wearing an apron lately to just kind of keep my clothes a little bit cleaner when we're using power tools and working with sawdust. I know that the idea of working with power tools is a little intimidating for some, and I don't want you to feel like that. So I really like this apron because it says powerful, and that is exactly what I'm trying to help you feel is to feel like you are powerful and also it's kind of a little fun play on power tools because I do like to use power tools and I know that that can be intimidating for some and I don't want you to feel like that. I want you to feel powerful when you're using power tools and confident. For today's project, we are gonna be working with some of the first power tools that I ever worked with and that is a drill and a jigsaw and then I also have an electric staple gun that has like a brad nailing option. We're gonna use that a little bit later. And all of these are really good power tools to start out on if you're trying to gain a little confidence. All right, so for my first farmhouse DIY, we are going to be making an awesome Gothic arch window similar in style to the ones that you'd see Joanna Gaines using in her designs. They're really fun. They can be really, really expensive. And I have designed this free printable that you can get, and I'll put the link in the description box below, and we're gonna be using this as a template. And obviously it's a little windy out here. <laughs> I believe it's 24 inches by 36, so it's a good size. All right, enough with the intro. Let's get going on our project. So. I figured we could do this one of two ways. So funny. Okay, they stop honking their horn. No! <laughs> this is gonna make a funny segment. Do you hear that? They really want somebody's attention. Oh goodness. Hopefully they're done. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they're done this time. So I figured that we could approach this one of two ways. The first way was to do the technique where we take the graphite paper and we trace this onto the board, which is a really good option. You could definitely do that, but I just thought it might be a little tricky with the size of this. I think that I have a better option. And that is I am going to take some spray glue and we are going to put some spray glue on our template and actually stick our template down to the board while we jigsaw it. So we'll just peel it off afterwards and then um, do a light sanding and we're gonna put paint on it. So I think that it's gonna be okay. Oh, and by the way, I'm using MDF. You could use any kind of plywood that you want for this project. It's scrap wood that I had around. So it was free to me. I always have scraps left over from my project. So this is a really good way to use up scrap wood. There's a breeze today. This is gonna hold this in place really good. So I'm just gonna take some spray glue and and just spray it onto the wood. We're just gonna let this get tacky by letting it sit for 30 seconds, kind of get rid of some of these bubbles. And it's stuck down pretty good and I'm hoping that it will work out great and at least this way with the breeze that we've got going on, this won't be flying all over the place. So we're gonna start out by switching this bit to a drill bit so we can drill a pilot hole for our saw blade to fit through. All right, so to do that, all we're gonna do is loosen this up and we can pull that out. Then we're gonna wanna make sure the hole is fully open. And we can stick that right into the hole, right? And then I kind of hold it in place and then I pull the trigger and kind of hold it tight and that will help it kind of tighten and then you just Make sure it's good and tight, and then there you go, and we're ready to drill some pilot holes. Now we're gonna start cutting, so you want to make sure that you have protection for your eyes, and so I always have my nice little safety glasses. Now, you may want to wear a face mask. I am in open air, there's a breeze. I think I'll be okay, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of tired of wearing face masks everywhere, but I would recommend wearing one. I'm living a little dangerously. Now we get to use our jigsaw. All you have to do is pull on the trigger. 
Yeah, we're powerful. <laughs> All we're gonna do is take our blade, stick it in one of these holes and start cutting. Just keep cutting and keep cutting till we have all of the white space gone. Okay, so we've got one whole panel here, nice and clean. You can get a jigsaw starting around $30 or so. I've been using a $30 one for several years and it's been okay. Having said that, I recently upgraded to this one that I think I got on sale for around $50 and there was a tremendous difference in ease of use and quality of cut. So I would recommend spending at least that on a jigsaw. You can even go as high as $200, but this $50 one really did a great job. So you just start cutting in the jigsaw hole and then work your way over to the line and then cut along that line. When you get to the top of one of the points, stop. And then I lifted out my jigsaw and flipped the blade around and went back in the opposite direction and took it to the next corner. I kept repeating this process over and over until all of the white space was gone. With interruptions and filming, it took me about an hour and a half to cut this all out. So this is definitely a good afternoon project. Here it is. Isn't that just so awesome? Our template held up really, really well. So all we need to do is kind of just remove this. This can actually be the back if we need to, but I think we'll be able to get it all off. There's a couple like little spots that are a little bit of high point. So I've got my electric sander. Makes the job go faster. I love my power tools. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and sand down some of the rough spots. Apparently I'm not the only one doing construction right now. So I hope you don't mind the noise in the background. And that's okay, cause I'm making noise for my neighbors. But we are done sanding and we've smoothed down some of those rough spots. I'm really happy with this. I think it looks fantastic. Now I wanna show you what's gonna take it over the edge to make it look more authentic and just more finished looking. So I picked up this PVC flat I think it's trellis molding and this whole eight foot section was four dollars what's awesome about this is it bends and so we are going to just nail some of this to the edge to finish it off on a normal window you would have some of this and then i also had this left over from my shelf build and so i'm going to be putting this because it's a little bit thicker and a little bit more sturdy on the bottom, but you could use this all the way around. So that's just up to you. But this way I can get away with just using one of these and then I can use this on the bottom. It's a little thicker, a little sturdier. It looks a little bit more like a window sill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna very carefully and scientifically just make this touch the bottom and then we are just gonna go little by little to get our mark. And we're gonna just pinch that making it flat till we figure out where we want this. Then we're gonna take a pen and mark it. Now, if you don't have a miter saw, that's okay. You can definitely get away with cutting this with your jigsaw. I'm just gonna use my miter saw. I'm not gonna do a tutorial on that because I've done it on other episodes, but I'm gonna pull it out because it's gonna give me a nice clean cut and that's what I'm looking for. I've got an electric staple gun. What's nice about this is it also shoots brad nails and it takes all the hard work out of it for you. These are little tiny brad nails and they're gonna be perfect for what we're doing. You just slide those in there on the side and click it into place like that. All we're gonna do is drive those nails in and then we'll do the same thing to the other side and then we'll put on the bottom piece. My heck, <laughs> I love this. And this little detail right here is making all the difference. Now I'm gonna just take it inside and paint it.
To give it a little age, I just take a little sandpaper and scuff up the edges. When it's all said and done, I only spent the $4 on the trellis trim because I had everything else on hand. But if you were to recreate this look for yourself, you could definitely get the job done for under $20, maybe even less if you were able to find some free scrap wood. I couldn't be more thrilled with my end result. The next DIY that I have for you is we are going to be doing some wood candlesticks. Now, Joanna always goes out and has these wonderful artisans make her these things from scratch, and I'm sure that that is not cheap. So we're gonna fake the look. Shh, I won't tell if you don't tell. <laughs> and we are gonna use wood spindles. We're gonna just cut these in different varying sizes and lengths and then we will go from there and we'll just kind of see how it takes shape. So for my first length I'm gonna cut it off right there right at the edge of that and then I'm gonna cut it at about 18 inches so that will be right in there. It doesn't need to be exact. We're just kind of going for estimates so I'm just gonna put a mark right here. So that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna take another one and we're gonna turn these into like some, some shorter ones. For this first one, we will cut it off right there. Okay. So we'll turn this one into two, make a mark. It doesn't need to be exact. And now for this third one, I am going to do maybe the same length as that, but it's much shorter, obviously. But we'll keep like this part the same for a little bit of consistency. Okay, so we've got these set of three different sizes. I picked these up at Hobby Lobby. They're regularly $2.99 for a set of four, and I make sure I get everything on 50% off sale or use a coupon. So we're gonna attach those to a base just so they're a little bit more sturdy. But I picked up this little bag of, it's called a wooden base. I don't know exactly what it is, but I got it at Michael's for super cheap. I didn't know what it was, and I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I have to have it. Look at this. If we take this wooden base and set this on top of each one of these, upside down like that, it really looks like the top of a candlestick. I already had these on hand, but if you wanted a functioning candlestick, I would recommend picking up some wood candle cups. They have these at Michael's for such a great deal. The hole in that. That's the hole in the bottom, but I want to countersink it. I have a countersink bit around here somewhere, <laughs> but in a pinch, you can just use a bigger drill bit and just put it right on top of that hole. It's not as pretty of a countersink, but it'll get the job done. There we go, that's a better one. If you put it on reverse, that's what it looks like. <laughs> so that might be a good idea. Get it poking out the other side. Kind of start it by hand a little bit. Hey, that should be on there good. I just glue my decorative wood base upside down on top of my candlesticks using Gorilla wood glue and allow them fully to dry. Then I wanted to make them not look like pressure treated lumber and give them an aged look. So I took some antiquing glaze and I kind of dry brushed it on and then I took a wet paper towel and kind of wiped it down a little bit to wipe off some and smooth out some of the rough edges. I repeated this exact same process with white chalk paint over the top.
the finished result totally looked aged and have this really cool patina on them. And if I ever decide to use them as an actual candlestick, I might switch out those tops with the candle cups. But all in all, I spent a total of $6 on all three candlesticks, and that's not too bad considering the Magnolia ones are over $20 a piece. So I'm going to be doing a knockoff of a Magnolia Home cake stand, and I'm actually gonna make two of them so we can do a tiered effect. And I'm gonna make it two different ways, and you'll see why in a minute, um, because I wanted to give you two options. I thought it might be fun to see if I could re create the same look on a tight budget for those of you who may not be able to splurge on a Magnolia Home decor piece. So I popped on over to their website and I found these really adorable cake stands. I decided to knock off this one because I really liked the scalloped edge. I like the, the metal versus the wood. And I thought it would be a really fun project to see if I could get the look for less. And I think that we can. So we're gonna do this two ways. If you look at the edge detailing on the original piece, it's actually made, I believe, from plywood because you can actually see kind of the layering effect on the edge of the cake stand. By me doing it this way, the larger one, I think it's gonna actually end up being a little bit more authentic to the original. If you have some plywood lying around, this will be the less expensive option. So I had some scrap woods left over from building my bench, and this is one of the pieces, and I'm actually gonna use up pretty much every last drop of my plywood over the course of the next couple of tutorials. I'm actually gonna cut two, and you'll see why. So I measured and found some bowls in my house. So look around, you might find the right thing, and that will help you get a perfect circle. So we're gonna go out and cut this out with our jigsaw, but I'm going to work slowly. And then if we have any rough spots, I'm gonna just sand those down. That is for somebody who has a jigsaw, maybe has some plywood sitting around or can get their hands on something. For those of you who don't and are a little intimidated by using a jigsaw, I have not forgotten you. And we're gonna use a pre-cut round. So each of them has their kind of pros and cons and I'll go over that as we go. Now let's go cut out our circles. Our circle turned out pretty good. There are a couple of like rough spots. So now I'm gonna take my electric sander and sand it all down nice and smooth and then also do a good sanding on the top. So I've got my two circles cut out and sanded down. This one is my top one, and so I was a little bit more particular with this one. It looks pretty darn good, in my opinion. And then I cut out a second circle. This is about a half inch smaller than this one. We are gonna be gluing this to the top one, and then we are going to be doing that scalloped edge detail. I thought that that would make the scallop edge detail so much easier to apply on this one. And so that's why we have two circles. This is the underside of the top piece. And we're gonna put both rough sides together. We're going to attach this to the top. So first of all, we're gonna put on our trusty E6000. And this is really good. We're gonna use this again, so keep it close by. And then just for some immediate stick, we're gonna put on some hot glue. Then we are going to flip this over and we are gonna just make sure that it is centered. This is a candlestick that I got at Michael's. We're gonna find center on this. Trace it so we know where it goes. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the E6000. I thought about using nails and stuff, but I think we're gonna be okay with this. And some hot glue for immediate stick. Flip it over and squeeze it down and put it right where it's supposed to be. All right, that actually, I'm surprised how good that sticks. So now we have a cake stand, which I'm actually pretty excited about. It looks really good. We need the really adorable kind of metal scalloped edging. So 
This is my very affordable, and hopefully it's gonna work out. I have a good feeling about it. I picked up some d tongue depressors. You can get these at the Dollar Tree. You can get them pretty much at any craft store. We are gonna make the scalloped edge out of popsicle sticks. I'm actually really quite excited about this. So I've decided to apply these first and then paint them after. And we are going to measure one inch and make a mark. And what's cool about these tongue depressors is you can take a cheap pair of scissors and just cut them. Instead of having to use a saw, you can use a saw. And so then you can see there will be our scallop and that will look really cute. I'm gonna do a whole bunch, a total of 48, but I'm gonna cut 24 of these. So we've got a pile of tongue depressors cut out for our scalloped edge. I'm gonna use a little bit of E6000 and a little bit of hot glue to attach them. We're gonna make sure we do the smooth side out and just a little bit at the top and then a little dab of hot glue for some instant stick right underneath that lip and hold it down. And then we're gonna just go all the way around. All right, so I finished applying my scalloped edge and overall I'm really happy with it. I'm gonna set it aside for a second and let it set up a little bit longer. But then I'm gonna take some spackling and I'm just gonna kind of fill in the gaps a little bit and then we'll sand it down and paint the scallop edge. But I don't wanna mess with it while it's still kind of freshly drying. So I'm gonna set that aside and we are gonna do the smaller version. We are gonna start out with this eight inch round that I picked up from Michaels. I got it 50% off, it was $3. Same with these candlesticks that I'm using. They were 50% off being $3 a piece. And so similarly to this one, we are going to find the center and then attach this, but then we are gonna do the scalloped edge on this one. I'm worried that because this is on an angle that they will kind of cave inward like that. So we, we're we gonna have to do something to keep them upright. Again, it's gonna be just the same process as before of hot glue and E6000. Yep. I think what I'm gonna have to do is I am gonna have to definitely do something here to keep it the way we want it. I was afraid of this. So yeah, we're gonna have to do this all the way around just because otherwise our scalloped edge will cave in. I am covered head to toe in glue. So the hard part is done. We've got our scalloped edge on. You could leave it alone, leave it just like this and paint it up and stain it and, and call it a day. I want mine to be a little bit more smooth, so I'm gonna actually take some joint compound since we're painting it. If we were staining it, you'd wanna use wood filler, but I'm just gonna use some of the spackling, and then we're gonna let this dry. You don't have to do this step. I just am doing it because I want it to be as close to the original as possible. Let it set till it's completely dry, and then I'm gonna sand it down. I am so thrilled with how these are turning out so far. They are so cute. But I do have to tell you, I think the easier way to do this, believe it or not, is to cut the two rounds because trying to brace this so that it wouldn't cave in on an angle was very tedious work. So having the other circle behind it, I just think that that's the better way to go and it's also the cheaper one. But we learn as we go, and if you don't, again, if you don't have a jigsaw and you've got time, it's gonna have a very similar end result. So I think that that will be good. Now it's time to give the scalloped edge, that metallic bronze finish that was on the Inspiration one. I'm gonna be using Craftsmart Onyx in the premium metallic acrylic paint. And this was like $1.79, not on sale. If I'm just gonna brush this on, and again, if you wanted to tape this all off and use spray paint, you could, but I'm just gonna go ahead 
and paint the scalloped edge just being very careful our scalloped edge is dried and honestly I think if I were to redo this I would probably go ahead and use the spray paint I think it would go a little bit faster and also give like a little bit smoother of a finish but I'm okay with this and we're gonna go with it anyways unless I change my mind <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> so for right now though, we need to amp up the farmhouse rustic on this wooden cake stand because it's by Magnolia Home. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this same Kona colored gel stain that I've used for the past several tutorials. I still have a ton of it left. So we're gonna do this very dry. So I'm gonna get some on my brush and then I'm gonna wipe a lot of it off because if you compare it to their cake stand, they just gone in and kind of just dry brushed very subtly. And so that's all we're gonna do here is keep it really subtle. So I'm done giving the rustic vibe to the tear trays. I've done antiquing them. I'm really happy with how they turned out. I'm gonna let it set a second before we put our polyurethane on. So I want to protect the finish. And so I'm gonna be using this premium spray enamel. This is not gonna be food safe, but I don't feel bad because the original wasn't food safe either. Just put something down underneath it. Just some sort of separation between your food and this. And we can use this for decor display. We can use it for cupcakes and cakes. My Magnolia Home cupcake stands and cake stand is done. And overall, I'm very happy with it. And I'm gonna be using this all the time. I think I've got the finish of it pretty close to that of the original. So actually the bigger one actually came in a little bit less expensive. I'm gonna call this one $5. And this one is more like $8 versus 28 and 40 respectively on their sizes. So we, we did really good on budget. I might actually make the little bit bigger version so I could do the three tier tray. So I've got a really fun printable that I'm gonna share with you in just a second, but I've got a few options of how to set this up in the first place. So I kind of need to explain. So the first option is option number one, go find a two by six cutoff, you can hit up like a construction site. A lot of times they're cut off pieces that they throw in the dumpster. I'd always suggest just asking before you take it, but if it's in the dumpster, you can almost assume that they're getting rid of it. You're gonna just keep it the regular width that it is and then cut it down to somewhere between eight and a half and nine inches. Basically the width of a piece of paper, maybe a little bit more, and you'll get to see that in a second. And then all you're gonna do is just paint the whole thing out front and back, white. I'm gonna be using my white chalk paint. Now I'm gonna go cut this down on my miter saw and that's a tutorial for another episode. I do lots of tutorials on how to use a miter saw so you'll have to check out some of those. But if you don't have a miter saw, you could definitely get away with just using a miter box. They're pretty inexpensive to get. I'll put a link for one on Amazon below. And that will work for the other option that I'm gonna show you here which is, this was one of my fun favorite finds and I actually featured this on another Trash to Treasure episode. And all it is, is it's kind of a packing material. I found this on an aisle in Home Depot and it was gonna be discarded. So I asked really nicely if I could just have a few of these and take them home. Go in and say it's packing material, kind of explain it. You can see that there's like a little groove in it, right? If you ask really nicely, I think that they'd probably say, okay, cause I think they just these. Now this is a piece of scrap wood. I have a lot of scrap still from my DIY shelf build um, for this shelf behind me. And it's really awesome because this is like three quarter inches wide and it fits inside this little slot so perfectly. So I'm gonna cut this down to fit our printable, but then we're gonna just paint this top portion in a white chalk paint and get it prepared. And then we are gonna take the bottom portion and we are gonna paint this out in black chalk paint. Okay, so now here's our awesome printable. Isn't this so cute? I love it. You can print this out on your own computer, but for some reason I get such a more saturated image and a more beautiful image by running down to Staples. So I printed this out at Staples. It cost me about 59 cents on their self-service 
color printer and my husband's being silly over here and trying to distract me. <laughs> Anyways, if either of these methods don't work for you, you could shrink this down just a little bit, print it out and put it in a five by seven frame and call it a day. And that would look cute too. Now I've got a few different methods of how to go about this and you're just gonna need to pick the method that's gonna work best for you. So I just decided to put them both on the same eight and a half by 11 printable to kind of simplify it. So you can see that this top one reads normally and all you're gonna do with this top portion is cut it off. And then you're just gonna put some Mod Podge on the front of the block and place your paper on top of that using a rubber scraper or even a credit card to smooth it out. This is a little technique that I learned from my good friend Lisa Burningham over on her channel. Then after that is dry, you're going to put on a second layer of Mod Podge over the top of the paper and your paper will bubble up, but do not worry because once it dries, these bubbles should disappear. Once it's fully dry, then you are gonna want to sand off the edges to give it that rustic feel and at the same time, make it look like it's painted on the wood and not just a Mod Podged piece of paper. This really helps to disguise that fact. The bottom one you'll notice is a reverse image. It's all backwards. It's gonna be kind of similar to the Pottery Barn pumpkin patch sign that I did several months ago. I'll put the link for that in the description box as well because it's kind of a really cool project. You are going to take some Liquitex and do a moderate layer of this medium. You can pick this up at Michael's or I'll provide a link in the description box below. I've had this on hand and used it for several projects and it really doesn't take very much at all. Then you're going to carefully want to place your reversed printable face down on the Liquitex without wiggling it too much. So you're gonna want it to get it all nice and lined up before dropping it face down. Then you're gonna want to smooth it out with your hands, making sure that there is very good contact. Then you're just gonna let this completely dry for a few hours. Once you're sure that it is dry, get a soft washcloth and a bowl of water and you will carefully and gently remove the paper by getting it wet. This part can be a little messy, so I would recommend putting a plastic bag or something underneath to protect your table. Once you've got the paper removed, the image should be on there in the proper direction. And once this fully dries, then you can scuff up those edges as well as the black painted base and give it that antique look that we are going for. Then you should be able to just take the sign portion and place it right into that ledge sitter base. All right, so we have our two versions of the little lemonade sign and both of them come in well under one dollar to have the pr print printed out at staples was 59 cents in color you could do it at home if you wanted and all of my wood was scrap wood and then i used paint supplies that i already had on hand now this one is the image transfer technique and it definitely has like more of a rustic vibe to it and then this one is our mod podge version which is actually really good i think if you're careful about mod podging you can get a really good look I like both versions for different reasons. So I'm just curious, which version would you do? Would you do the image transfer technique or the Mod Podge version? And also which base would you do? Would you do just like the thick block of wood or do you like this ledge sitting one as well? So let me know in the comment section. I am on my way to the store to pick up a, a few things for our DIY. I've seen a couple of episodes out there, kind of a similar idea, but they're using items from like the Dollar Tree, like stacking rolling pins on their sides, and I applaud the ingenuity. I think it's great and awesome, but I just picture my kids just destroying that within like the first 30 seconds. So today we're gonna be building one that will hold up to kids and stand the test of time, hopefully. <laughs> That's the idea. All right, so it's a whole 57 degrees outside here in Florida. I know you're, there's a lot of you probably going, oh, cry me a river. But that's actually kind of cold for Florida. But we are starting out in the garden center. Um, I'm hoping to find a pot 
or something that we could use as the base of the lamp. So we're gonna see what we can find. Maybe it's inside. I hope it's inside, that's warmer. <laughs> at the bottom of lamp posts, there's usually like a nice decorative um, thing at the bottom. So I'm thinking about getting a pot and just cutting a hole and sliding it on as a little decorative element. So I think this will be perfect. I'm here in the outdoor decking area and they've got several options here. They've got a big spindle that I'm considering. And then they also have some little spindles here that I might consider. Those are a little cheaper. Um, I'm just really debating with the lantern that I have. Um, since it's a little bit smaller, I might do this two spindles together or I might do the big bulky one. All right, so we're back from our field trip and I've got my hot glasses on. <laughs> and that's because we're gonna be cutting here on my saw. I ended up deciding on going with the big one it was only like $13.50 and it was just so much more substantial and more sturdy and I just thought it would work better overall. And $13.50 is a great price. If you got this in the indoor one, it would be about $50 to $80. Of course, this is an outdoor one, so the, the finish is much rougher, so we may want to sand it down a little bit. Depends on if you're okay with the rustic look or not. I decided I want to screw a piece of wood into the top part and for that to be flat. So we're just gonna go ahead and flip this up onto my miter saw and take the finial part off. So make sure you wear safety glasses and take extra precautions. We can cut this off, it's not a big deal. We've got this. So let's line this up. And here we go. That was such a perfect cut that I can definitely use this somewhere else for something. So I'm gonna hang on to that. Um, but this is a nice flat flush cut and it's gonna be perfect. So now what we're gonna do with this post is I have some end cutoffs from a dowel that I used for another project. So I have these for free, but you can go to any craft store or even Walmart and pick up a dowel. This is a 5 8 inch dowel and it's gonna be less than a buck. So they're really, really inexpensive. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole into the sides of my post and we will just use some Gorilla wood glue and glue these into the sides and that is going to be perfect for hanging stockings or attaching a wreath or other decor. So these are gonna be very functional as well as decorative. We want our dowels to be on the same spot on either side. So I'm just gonna measure down three inches and then we're gonna find center, which on this is one and three quarter inch. Now I've got a wood boring drill bit, you can see here, and this just drills out really nicely for a dowel, so that's what we're gonna be using. And I'm gonna protect my eyes because I think a lot of dust might be flying. And then we are going to drill. Super easy, you can handle this, I promise you. And then we're just gonna do it on the other side. And there you have your hole for your dowel. And now it's a good time to give the whole thing a good just sand down. All right, so it's not perfect, but it's a lot less rough. I just ran my electric sander over it. If you really wanted to do a good job, then you would wanna take like a hand um, sanding sponge. But this is good enough for me. <laughs> I'm not being super picky on it. Okay, so before we put our dowels in, we are going to build a base for it just so it's more sturdy. I mean, this is pretty sturdy, but you can easily knock that over. And the way we're gonna solve that is we're gonna attach this to the bottom. And this is just a piece of scrap wood left over from my bench that I built. And in the past, I've told you how to get some free scraps, ask a friend, check construction site dumpsters, and then also you can find free scrap wood on Facebook. So you don't need to spend any money on this part. So this is just for my scrap pile. And then, I picked up this, you, you'll remember from our shopping trip. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna just kind of cut a rough circle. It's not gonna be a perfect circle because it's out of scraps and that's what's gonna fit. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that on top of it. 
and then we'll cut a hole for this post to set into. This is not gonna be offering any kind of stability. It's just more purely decorative. This is shaping out great. I'm so excited about this. I'm gonna put in four screws just for good measure. I couldn't get this to squeeze out, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat the system here a little bit, and we're just gonna dunk it in the glue and shove that in. Hopefully it will go in. Be nice and snug though, like that's the idea. We'll just clean up any wood glue that's dripping. So now it's almost time to paint it. But before we do so, I was looking at this and I felt like these edges were a little unfinished. So I went searching around my house and we'll see what I got in my pocket. <laughs> All right, so here's what I came up with because I didn't want to spend any money on finials. I went rummaging through some old games and I came up with a couple of chess pieces and I think this is like a mini, I don't know, checker or something. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this mini checker piece and that will finish that off and then we'll put the little chess piece on the end and that will kind of serve as a little finial and I think it's gonna work out just great and I didn't have to spend any money on it. So feel free to do that. When you need like a little something extra, go rummaging around your house, you'd be surprised what you come up with. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use some E6000. It's my go-to adhesive. It's very strong stuff. And then we're also gonna put on a little bit of this hot glue as well, just because it will give us some instant stick. Just a quick reminder that we still have that secret project coming up at the end of this episode, so make sure you hold on for that. When I originally planned this project, I had a lantern that I was going to use, and it was this one. And it's really cute, right? After I got the larger base, I put this on top, and it looked like a tiny little head on a big body. It's a really cute lantern and I think it would have worked really well if I'd have gone with a skinnier spindle. But since I went with a bigger one, I decided I needed a bigger lantern. So I went over to Michael's and got this right here. And that looks much better, right? So much better. So I've pre-drilled a hole. We are going to line everything up. I think this turned out fantastic and we did it for under 40 bucks even with getting the new lantern it was still under 40 dollars which is a still for something this big that we can use year-round Well, I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. I wanted to take a quick break and tell you a little bit about Antique Candle Company. They make the most amazing smelling candles you will ever smell, and they're made right here in the United States. They have such an amazing selection of candles, and this month they sent me Warm Caramel Crumble, and I wish there was Scratch and Sniff TV because this smells so good. If you want like the yummiest smelling bakery inspired candle, this one is it. They also have a, a Christmas set that has four different scents in it. Sugar cookie, frankincense and myrrh, gingerbread, and cranberry. And they all smell so good. So if you're interested in learning more about Antique Candle Company and their offerings, I'll put a link in the description box below. So let's get back to those DIYs. Okay, so for my project, I am creating a welcome sign for just left of my entry door. And it's gonna say, welcome to our home. 
And you've probably seen these on Pinterest, I've seen them in craft stores and things like that. And what we're gonna do is we are going to paint it on a piece of wood. This is a totally free project for me because I had all of this stuff on hand. But if you were to recreate this look, you could probably get the job done for less than $10. So it's really affordable project. And it is just a two by 12 piece of lumber. It doesn't have to be two inches deep. You could do a one inch board as well, but this is just what I have. So the reason why I stained it was because I am plan on um, distressing it a little bit around the edges and I wanted it to have kind of like a dark finish showing through. So now what we're going to do is I have some oops paint that I picked up from Home Depot I believe and it was discounted and I've just had it around and we're going to just paint um, it right on. And so we'll just paint this all white. So I'm probably just gonna do one coat because it can be a little weathered and distressed. So there's no need to get a really good two coats on there. Now we're gonna move on to another portion of that project. And we will be spelling out welcome to our home. And home will be in really big block letters like you saw. And the O is gonna be a wreath. I actually had this left over from my Easter table project because I had kind of gone back and forth whether I wanted to use the small size or the big size. I ended up going with the big size. So this is left over from that. I just never returned it. And so I had it on hand. Now after Christmas and after a lot of holidays, I always go to the stores and check out the clearance bins for greenery, for um, florals and things that I can use in future projects. So I picked these uh, branches up for 90% off, making them 49 cents per branch. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna cut these apart. And then I have a whole pile of them all ready to go. And we are just gonna glue them on. And then we're gonna kind of go in the same motion so all of the greenery kind of goes around. And stick it in. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take and lay out your sign the way you want it. I can see where the wreath plays into it and we'll we'll set the wreath aside for now and we're going to take some of this graphite paper set it underneath we'll just start with the welcome and then we're going to take a pen or you could take another pencil and you're going to trace this the idea is that it will transfer onto the wood underneath pick out whatever font speaks to you. I just kind of liked it. It had a little sass to it. All right, so let me show you what we got here. So as you can see, this method worked really, really well. All right, because I'm already going to be painting the letters black, to make it a little easier on myself, I've decided to trace all the outside edges with a black Sharpie. And I just feel like this will make things a little smoother and easier to paint. Now it's time to paint. Taking the time to use the Sharpie will make this part really a lot easier. So my sign is totally dry. I'm happy with how it turned out. And this part always makes me a little nervous. So I've got it all painted nice and now we're gonna make it look old and rough it up with some sandpaper. Let me know if you're the same way in the comments as me. Let me know if you like distressed stuff. So we're gonna do it. So I've got a little piece of sandpaper here. You wanna go with the grain of the wood and then just kind of lightly sand it because we don't wanna, we don't wanna make it like too overly distressed, but enough that it has a little bit of love. All right, I survived the sanding and I'm actually happy that I did it. Um, it looks really a lot better. Just now I wanna add a few finishing touches. I'm gonna actually take some of this twine and wrap it around the top. And then we're gonna take a nail and hammer it in to hold the wreath on. So now it's time to place our welcome home sign. It was so much fun to make this. I'll put in the description box below the link to the printable that I used to trace this with. If you have a vinyl cutter, 
that will make your job a little bit easier but for those of us who don't just print it out and trace it and you can have a sign that looks like this too so our joanna Gaines inspired diy she is really known for her bakery sign it's in her bakery near the silos she has it up there on the brick wall but she's also used them in her fixer upper show and that's the one that we're going to do today just because i felt like it would be a really easy project for anybody to do i had this piece of scrap wood it's measures 12 by 36 and i had this on hand free free to me because it was left over from something else you could go into home improvement store and a lot of people will leave their cutoffs that they don't want for their projects and you can find a thin little piece of wood like this prior to painting we're going to take our three quarter inch square dowel and measure them for a frame i just do a blunt edge cut and you can get away with making this cut by just using a dollar tree hacksaw for this simple cut Then we're just gonna paint the main piece in a white chalk paint and the frame I decided to do in a black chalk paint for a higher contrast look. I attach my frame by using an electric staple gun with brad nails from the backside so you don't see any nail holes. Now we're ready to make our stencil. We are gonna be making a stencil out of removable vinyl. I bought this huge roll of Cricut vinyl. It's white because it doesn't really matter because we're just using it as a stencil. And when you buy it in bulk, it's a better deal that way. I've had a lot of people tell me that they are intimidated by these Cricut machines, but really they are not that difficult to use. Once you go in and start playing with it, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable. And before you know it, you will be a pro at it. <laughs> We're gonna go into Cricut Design Studio and type out the word bakery. Now I used the font Arial Black. Then you can split all the letters and then we can put one underneath one another. And then there's this really cool thing. If you highlight all of them, you can click align. So it aligns them top to bottom. And then you can also align it from left to right. So everything is nice and aligned. Due to the size of our stencil, we need to split up bakery in half to create two stencils. You do this by creating a rectangle and placing it behind the B-A-K. And then you duplicate it and place another one behind the E-R-Y, making sure to align Line the two rectangles. Then you're gonna to wanna to make sure each rectangle is attached to the associated letters. Then you're gonna to wanna to highlight both stencils and adjust to the appropriate size. And then we hit make it. Cut out your removable vinyl to the size you need and place it onto a standard mat, smoothing it out. Then, as before, we load our mat into the machine by hitting the arrow buttons and then we hit the C button for cut or cricket. <laughs> then, once it's done cutting, we unload it from our machine and we take our hook and we weed out what we don't want. Then we take our transfer tape and smoothly apply it over the top and then we can peel back our stencil and it's ready to go. Then we're going to lay our stencil down onto our finished board making sure it's smooth and then we peel back our transfer tape leaving our removable vinyl on the wood piece. And then we're gonna go ahead and paint the white chalk paint over the edge of the stencil let that dry and then what we're going to do is go back on top with our black chalk paint and fill in the stencil now when that is fully dry then you can just peel back your stencil and reveal your bakery sign which i think is a really cool thing if you want to do it with a vinyl you could do it either way just whatever your preference is i just wanted to show you the option of doing a stencil now in keeping with joanna Gaines flair i roughed up the sign with a little sandpaper now i haven't decided exactly where i'm going to hang this yet but it will probably go somewhere in my kitchen obviously well i decided to do a black frame on my I think it's a pretty close replica and I only spent less than five dollars for my version probably the only change I would make is to make the letters a bit wider if I were to redo this so you may want to keep that in mind for your project all right so for my next trash to treasure I have some empty bottles now 
My family really likes Indian food. And this is like a simmer sauce that we use for dinner. I like the shape of them because they're kind of square, but they are round up top. And I thought that that would make for some interesting decor sometimes. So I've been hanging onto these. My original plan for these bottles was to spray paint them black and then white chalk paint and then sand them down a little bit. But I didn't end up having enough white chalk paint. So after I sprayed painted them black, I ended up just using some white gloss spray paint that I picked up at Walmart for 97 cents and already had on hand making the black spray paint really unnecessary for what I ended up doing in the end. Once the spray paint was dry I brought them in and took some black chalk paint and decided to give it kind of an enamel wear look. I achieved this by taking a sponge brush and just randomly placing black around the rim and the bottom of the jar Perfection is not what we're going for here. We want it to look like it's been chipped and down to the iron. Then we do a couple of chippy spots in random locations on the bottle, trying to be a little different from each of the other four bottles. And then finally, we are gonna go into Cricut Design Studio and we're just gonna write the word home. It will be one letter per jar. And then of course we weed it and put transfer tape on it and cut out each individual letter and apply one letter to each bottle. To style it, I used some boxwood that I already had on hand from Walmart in the jars, but you could style it however you like not including the boxwood. These jars came in, including paint and vinyl, around $1.50 for all four. Not too bad. For my project today, I am going to be knocking off a designer item. This time it's from Ballard Designs. I found a beautiful chandelier that was $529, and I really loved it but I wanted to see if I can do it for a lot less. I'm gonna be using some really interesting items. I think you might even actually question my sanity a little bit when I, I pull out some of the items, but that's what you gotta do is you gotta get creative. You gotta think outside of the box, but I promise you that they're gonna work and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you three interesting things that I'm using. The first is I'm gonna be using some cookie sheets from the Dollar Tree. I think they're gonna really work for a part of our project. And then I'm using three of these six foot dog tie out cables. So like a dog chain from the Dollar Tree again. And then finally, and this is a little bit odd, I am using eight tuna cans, like empty tuna cans. So we've had a lot of tuna sandwiches recently. Okay, so we're gonna start by building the frame of the chandelier first. And I picked up three of these 36 inch long, one and a half by one and a half inch poplar pieces of lumber from Home Depot. But we are gonna keep two of them, the original length, and then we are gonna take the third one and cut it directly in half. We're gonna just go ahead and mark that and make that cut now. So a couple quick safety tips. Normally I have some clear, protective eyewear for my saw. I couldn't find them, so we're gonna make do with my sunglasses, but that's just to prevent any sawdust from getting in your eyes. In between each use, I always unplug it because I have little people around and I just don't want them accidentally, you know, turning it on like that and hurting themselves even if I'm gonna only be away from it for just a second. We're gonna be building the frame for the chandelier. I didn't want anything exposed like in the way of nails or anything on the end. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna insert dowels inside the joint to keep it all nice and put together. We're gonna take the one of the long ones and we are going to Take a nail and put it in about the center. Tap it into place, make sure it's nice and level. And then you take some wire clippers and you clip off the head of the nail so then it's kind of sharp. And then we're gonna line it up on this table. And then we take our hammer and tap it into place. And what that's gonna do is make a mark where your starting hole should be. And then we can just take this nail 
and pull it out. So now you've got a, a starting point for each joint. Drill nice and straight. And then we do the same thing to this. So roughly this is gonna work. We're probably gonna need to do a little sanding around the joints, but that's okay. Before we glue this together and finalize it. Then you're just gonna add some wood glue in the holes and if a little bit gets through, that's okay because then it will help strengthen that joint. For a much tighter joint, I highly recommend using a clamp. So I've let my frame dry overnight, so I'm gonna take off the clamp now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand the frame because we want a nice um, smooth surface. Using a sander makes it so much faster. <laughs> So I decided to move the party inside um, because I didn't know how the humidity and heat would work with the stains. I'm doing it in our guest bathroom because this is an area that is not getting used right now and then I can also turn on the fans for circulation and all of that. I'm going to put on some gloves to protect my fancy manicure that I still don't have. <laughs> no, I'm just doing this because it's going to get messy and I don't want to have a stain all over my hands. And then I've got a cast off sock that its partner probably got eaten by my dryer, like so many socks do. Just gonna dunk my hand in the stain and I'm just using a gel stain because I thought it would work a little bit better and give us a nice thick coat. And that is going on very dark, which is kind of good because that's kind of what I wanted. The next step in the process is creating the iron strapping that was on the wood frame. And you're going to need protective gloves for this step because you're going to be exposed to some sharp edges and it's really important to protect your hands so you don't get cuts. They're not very expensive at all and definitely worth it. Then you're going to take your tin snips and cut off the lip of the cookie sheet, leaving just the bottom part. Then you're going to take that part and cut two and a half inch strips. Then you are ready to spray paint, which we will just spray paint all of the tuna cans anything that's going to be metal we're going to use the leftover spray paint from my project last week and spray everything a nice flat iron looking black so i've let everything dry for several hours and hopefully it is all dry enough to do my next step we're going to start with the iron the iron <laughs> the pretend iron um, strapping that was made from cookie sheets and we've sprayed it in that um, outdoor flashing that black is I'm going to start on the inside so the rough side is right underneath the tuna can <laughs> tuna can oh my goodness and so we're gonna just fold it around and get it on there and it should just bend really nicely and then we're going to put a little pressure and pull it up and bend it all the way around and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a little mark here and then i'm going to grab my tin snips that i left inside so i'm going to go grab those and i'm going to take this off we are going to trim it to fit to kind of keep everything in place I'm going to take my tuna can and I've kind of punched a little hole in this, set this on top. So I'm going to drill pilot. So that is set. Then I'm going to switch my tip to a traditional tip. I'm just using drywall screws. I had them on hand. You could probably use whatever you want. And then we are going to screw this right into place. Look at that. So that is on there good. That will help the fake iron strap to stay in place good. And we'll do that all the way along. So you can see right here, I have a little bit of an issue and I did know that this was gonna happen. And what it is, is it's just where this seam is meeting up. And I've got some, you know, E6000 on there, but it doesn't wanna stay down because it wants to bend out. So my solution for this, and it's also kind of an aesthetic thing as well, on the um, original, there's some nail heads, and I just am going to, I took these thumbtacks and I sprayed them the same color. So I press those in, and not only does that hold it into place, but it adds kind of an aesthetic as well. So, and anywhere that I'm scratching on this ironwork, I'm planning on going back in and touching up.
Next, I drill pilot holes into the wooden round in a square shape for the hooks that will hold the chain supports. Then I place another thumbtack in the center for an added decorative touch. So on the edges, I've come in two and a half by three quarters. We're gonna pre-drill the screws for the hooks where we're gonna attach our cables. All right, so I'm getting ready to hang my light fixture and I had my husband come out earlier and help me mark where we were gonna need to put it because it was kind of a two person job because we had to kind of center in between the two light fixtures, you can get see. Um, and apparently he did not want me to miss where he marked. So I need to determine whether or not there's a stud up there. So I'm gonna use a stud finder. That would be most ideal because obviously that would be the most secure. Um, if not, I do have a toggle that I can put into the drywall which would support up to 50 pounds worth of weight, which should be more than plenty because my light fixture is nowhere near that. Um, so let's go see if there's a stud. There's a stud in my house. Let's see if there's a stud up there. No stud. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be using the toggle. So I wanted to show you before I hung it that I attached the cables to the hooks right here and over here and so on all corners and then I connected it right there as well. So my project is done, it's hung, I am so thrilled with how it turned out. I feel like it's a really good dupe and a really good knockoff of the Valor design. My version came in at around $60. There is a way to do it for about half the cost and that would include switching out the candles for some from the Dollar Tree. This is the Dollar Tree version and this is my version. Now, the reason I went with these candles is because the Dollar Tree one, you would have to manually turn on each and every time you use it. You have to get up and, and switch that out. My version, you actually can turn on with a remote and off with a remote, so it's really cool. They're a little bit beefier. I'm really glad I spent the extra money, but if you're looking for a little bit more budget-friendly solution, switch out for the Dollar Tree candles. So today's do, I went over to Pottery Barn and on the Mother's Day list, there was a monogrammed Lazy Susan tray that was kind of a, like a wine barrel top. I'm like, that would be really fun. Not only would that be really fun to have, but that would make a really good dupe. I knew from the get-go the monogram would be probably the biggest hurdle to overcome. I knew that no matter what I did, I would probably have to make the monogram darker than the original. And that was okay because I could still get definitely the essence of it. But I didn't realize like what a challenge that would be. And I did a lot of homework for you guys to save you some, some trouble. So I have this little sample piece of wood just to show you, give you an idea of all the little different ways. Because I wanted to give you guys the, the easiest method with the best result that was like something really user friendly that you could do without a lot of headache and hassle. This is actually my first attempt. My first idea was wood burning. You're gonna need to practice a little bit better to get um, a really awesome result. So I'm gonna keep working on that one and, and maybe even get a nicer wood burner. I tried so many different methods, but the method that I came up with and the method that I'm gonna to recommend to you is awesome. I'm so excited. I really think that it's going to have a great result. So what it entails, and oh, I'm gonna link the funniest tutorial. It was hilarious that I watched on this technique. It was like this guy, I don't even remember, what was his name? So the first thing you need to do is design your monogram. I went to Canva and created it. I think it's Times New Roman font. It's like the identical font that Pottery Barn uses and I got it about the size that I want. Then what you need to do is reverse the image so when it prints out, it prints out reversed of what you need. The trick here is you need to get shipping labels, 
or some kind of Avery paper labels. I'll put all of the supplies that I use in the description below so you know where to get it. You pull off all of the stickers and all of it, so you, all you're left with is the wax paper itself. There's people who do the wax paper technique. For me, I found it, it was too flimsy, and when I fed it through the printer, it just kind of ate it up. So that did not work for me and I would not recommend that. The next step is if you have a laser printer at home, you can do this at home. I went to Staples and I gave them my paper. They were so nice. My local Staples here were so nice and so helpful. And you get an image that looks like that. So I'm gonna cut mine down smaller. I want it to run kind of with the grain and I'm taking into consideration that there are handles on the side. Okay, so this looks to be pretty centered and what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna just kind of hold this down and make a couple just very subtle pencil marks that I'm gonna go back in and erase later. You probably can't see that on camera, but I can kind of see where the pencil markings are, and that will just give me an idea of where to place the, the medium that I'm gonna be using. Now, the medium I'm gonna be using is Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. You've seen me use Mod Podge in some of my other tutorials. I'm a big fan of Mod Podge. Mod Podge has an image transfer um, product. I did not like it, at least for this application. It would make the paper stick really bad, and I just I just wasn't a fan. The best results I got, and I did a lot of research on it, was this Liquitex product. I got mine off of Amazon. Such a good product. I love it, um, and that's what we're going to be using. I got kind of a, I think it's like a one inch craft brush. You want it to be in good condition. You don't want it to be beat up. So we're going to take our medium, we're going to be kind of generous with it at first, and we're going to get it into the area that we've marked here. And I actually kind of go both directions, um, just so it gets really worked into the wood. This is too much, we can't leave it like this. So now we're gonna go with a grain of the wood and kind of remove some of this. So we're left with a nice smooth base for our monogram. Set that aside and then we're gonna take our monogram and line it up again. And you don't want to wiggle this around too much. You want to kind of set it down and then once it's down, rub it in, not too hard, but with enough pressure that it sticks. And then as this dries, we're going to want to come and check back to make sure there's no wrinkling or anything and if so, kind of smooth that out. We're going to let that sit for about two hours. So I've set the tray aside while the image transfer dries and sets up. And I think I forgot to mention where I got the tray. I got the tray at Hobby Lobby. It was 40% off for $24. It was beautiful. It was big. It was sturdy. The color of the wood was beautiful. And I knew that that would be a really good match for our project. So the original was actually a Lazy Susan, and I'll get to that part later. Um, I know that that's a tray, but we are making it into a Lazy Susan. Now, I needed to solve the problem of the metal edge banding. So I went into my local Home Depot. I brought my picture with me. I kind of went searching for some kind of metal strapping. I thought I would find something there that would work. And I was right. I found several things that I thought would work. There was a section of just metal strapping that was very similar. But then when I showed it to a certain Home Depot worker, he's like, I know the perfect thing for that. And he's like, our pallets come attached in galvanized steel that was very similar to that. He's like, I cut that off every day and I'll just give you some for free. 
<laughs> Ice like free. Sweet. So this is free. Um, you can buy some metal strapping if you'd like or go into your local Home Depot, kind of tell them what this is. Tell them they get it off of the pallets and see if they'll give it to you for free. Now the only problem is when he told me about it, I didn't realize that it was going to have all these kinks in it. So what I have decided to do, because there's just no way to flatten those kinks out, so what I am doing is there's these little bit longer sections that are maybe like six to eight inches. And I am just gonna take some um, tin snips and cut very carefully and try to do it as straight as possible with my tin snips. And I'm just gonna cut um, these little sections out and we'll just put them side by side all the way around the tray and I think it will look just fine and it will definitely serve our needs. So we're going to need about eight of these middle pieces to go around my tray because I'm leaving the handles exposed. If you wanted to cover those up then you would need about ten. So we can leave them as is, they're kind of cool the way they are. Um, but to be true to duping it as close as possible, I'm going to do a little glaze over the top of mine and all I've done is taken some leftover black paint that I had from my front door. You could use craft paint or whatever you have on hand and I've watered it down because I'm just going to do a light glaze over it. You don't need that much, but we're really going to just wipe it on just the one side that's going to be exposed and then Take a paper towel and dab it off. You can leave a little bit of the paint to kind of just give it an aged patina, but it's just as simple as that. Okay, so our metal is dried and so is our monogram. So I am ready to pull this back and reveal the monogram and cross your fingers and hope that everything went well and that it looks good. So everybody hold your breath right now. <laughs> All right. The moment of truth. Hopefully we made Craft Daddy proud. I'm gonna pull it up very slowly. Oh, I've got this upside down. I'm gonna rotate this so we can see it the right way. So far, so good though. Very slowly. I think we did it. DIY wood polish that I'm doing over on my IGTV channel that works with this that I'm going to be using on this and I'll put that over the entire thing so it should smooth it out and have a nice even finish on the entire tray. So my original plan was to screw these metal edge banding on but the metal's too thick, it's too dense and it's just not gonna work. So, new plan. <laughs> We're gonna line it up in the middle and I am gonna just glue it down with some E6000 and take some little clamps that I got from the dollar store to kind of hold it in place and it will be fine. I am so excited and stoked about how this is going so far. It's been 24 hours. Our edge banding has dried with the E6000. And even though we didn't end up using the first technique, I thought that's the way DIY goes is you have to think outside the box. You have to be able to problem solve. We have a few of those seams butted up against each other. And honestly, it's probably fine to leave it like that, but I thought it would look a little bit more finished if we took a thumbtack, which I just had in my house, silver thumbtacks, and put a little bit of that watered down black just to also give it kind of that aged patina, and we're just going to push them in in between the seams. Honestly, if you wanted to stop the project right here and call it good, you could just have a serving tray. But we are duping the Lazy Susan version over on Pottery Barn, so we're going to turn ours into a Lazy Susan. How I'm going to do that is I ordered a Lazy Susan 
off of Amazon. We are going to attach this to the bottom and we're just gonna screw it on. I've got some, so this part was like six bucks, six or eight bucks, I don't remember. And I've got four half inch screws and we're just gonna attach this with screws. Okay, it works, look at that. We did it, okay. So we now have a lazy Susan. These edges are kind of sharp and we don't want it to scratch up our wood surfaces if we were ever to put it on a wood table or something else that could scratch. So I just cut out a black piece of felt and we're gonna just hot glue that down and then we've got protection for our wood table. This is a pretty good dupe. I don't know, what do you think? Let me know in the comments if you think this is a good dupe. So for my last DIY, I'm so excited about it. Last month, we did the Declaration of Independence with the translucent flag. Okay, I can't wait to reveal this to you. Before I show this to you, I have another kind of exciting announcement, so hang with me. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna quit delaying. Here it is. I am so excited about it. Isn't this so cute? I just had so much fun designing this printable for you. Sweet lemon farm, fresh squeezed. So cute. I really think that this is striking and packs a punch. And I'm putting the link for this free printable in the description box below. Click on it, follow the instructions. It's not too hard. Then I take this to Staples. I love Staples. They are always good to me there. Plus, I just like their quality of print there. And what you do is you email this digital copy to staples at printme.com. And you can print this out at Walmart. You can go to Costco and print it out there. Costco, I think is the cheapest. It's, I think it's $6.99. It's a little bit more at Staples, but I really like the color saturation and the paper that they put it on. It's kind of like a regular paper, but a little bit heavier weight. And I love the kind of that matte sheen on this. So that's this printable. But I've been being asked to open you know, an Etsy shop for a while and I designed a whole set to match this. Now the lemon one is gonna be free, like I mentioned, but I've designed a blueberry. I've designed an orange, a strawberry, which is so cute. Here we go, strawberry. I love that, isn't that cute? <laughs> And then, of course, a peach. That's very summery as well. And a raspberry. So there's a whole set of these. These ones were actually just put in a Dollar Tree frame. So, and look how cute they look. I've also designed these with different stripe colors to be flexible for people's decor. I really like this kind of mint green blue color that's on there, but I've also done it in a gray and a green and another. So that's all on my Etsy shop. So check that out if you're interested in having like the whole set. And I'll put a link for it in the description box below, or you can just stick with the one, a free one that I'm offering you. This is always a good DIY because it's so easy to put together. Cause all we do is we take out our frame backing and we put it in our frame and we call it a day and so easy. Depending on where you have this printed out, it will run you about $7 to $12. If you do it in the 8x10 size, you could easily get this done for a little over $1.50, making this a very affordable summer DIY. But for me personally, I like this for year round. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And until next time to all of my DIY Niners, bye.